Welcome to JD Kirsten Farms here in the town of Paul. My name is Neil Kirsten. The town of Paul is situated in the Berg River region, which is about 60 kilometers northeast of Cape Town. JD Kirsten is a producer export of table grapes, and our predominant markets are the UK, the EU, and, and the Far East. Today we're standing in front of this dam, which is about 85-90% full, and uh, so this is quite a beautiful sight. Uh, however, we've been through a drought from 2016 to 2018 and during this time we learned some valuable lessons uh, in terms of how we think about water and some of our other production inputs. Over the last season we had seen our water usage decrease by 22% uh, and that is despite bigger crop in the season of 2020. Our main uh, sustainability efforts really uh, revolve around the following uh, topics. Number one is how we care for our soil. Number two would be water usage. And number three, of course, would be aspects around electricity usage. The first principle that we'd like to highlight is, is the way we manage our soils. Better you manage your soils in theory, better your soils will be able to retain moisture. Where we are standing right now is, is a block of, uh, of starlight grapes, which is an early season red variety. In the late summer, early autumn, we had put down uh, some mulch, and that was a layer of compost, about 35 cubic meters per hectare. Um, as, we, as, as can be seen, we've opened up this little area here next to the vine. The compost at the moment is not really visible, but that's really been taken up into the soil during the, the good winter season that we've had with the rains. It's washed the compost in. Uh, and then we've covered up the, the compost with the mulch, in this case, straw mulch. It really starts adding value from the summer months in order to retain soil moisture. What we found is, is that you can save up to three or four days between irrigations, and that really helps to firstly drive down your, your water consumption, but also your electricity usage. The other thing of the compost is, is in, within time, we'd like to become less dependent upon synthetic inputs. We know that over usage can lead to many problems in agriculture. The last benefit that I'd like to highlight is it just decreases the weed pressure that you would find inside the flock. Here we are in a d different block. Uh, this is a prime variety, which is a early season white seedless variety. This block, we had also applied compost and the, the straw mulch on the plant row. What we had done additionally was to establish a, a, a multi-species cover crop. Uh, as can be seen here around me, quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of greenery, which is, uh, which is quite different uh, to how we used to farming. This is something we're doing on a, on a trial basis, uh, so not on a commercial scale yet, but we're quite happy with the result. Uh, you can see we got all of this uh, green material from winter rainfall. We had not up until now irrigated the cover crop. We had not sprayed it with anything, so it managed to stay healthy. It added a lot of benefits to us during the winter month in the, in the sense that you have had a living root in the soil, which helps with water infiltration. And now as we move into the summer months, we will also uh, have the added benefit of more water retention. The second point um, on us as a business trying to reduce our, our impact uh, on the environment comes to the way that we use our water. Obviously, uh, each of our farms has a prescribed maximum amount of water that's available per hectare. And so we try and use that water as, as efficiently as we possibly can. Uh, by not uh, over irrigating uh, and the way we try and do that uh, at JD Kirsten Farms is with the precision irrigation system that we use uh, called DFM. Now DFM are electronic uh, soil moisture probes that we have distributed right throughout the farm and they give us readings on an hourly basis to measure soil moisture uh, as well as temperature. The DFM system is a wireless system it's also uh, fully uh, automated in the sense that um, you can get your, your soil moisture readings on a mobile device or on your PC and you can also uh, open and close the, the valves of each uh, block in the, in the vineyard to, to, to irrigate. The DFM system measures soil moisture uh, at different root zones um, and then gives readings and gives uh, recommended irrigation hours and frequency based on that. What we have found uh, over the last couple of seasons of, of using DFM is that we can actually now move to less frequent irrigation, but also longer irrigation cycles. The idea behind that is really fill your, the soil profile uh, with water, with moisture, and then to naturally let it dry out again to a level where you get root flush, uh, 
better root development. That also forces your vines to go and look for moisture deeper within the soil. We have also been fortunate over the last few seasons to have the, the Agricultural Research Council uh, on the farm conducting a irrigation a trial and that has really helped us to, to fine-tune some of the, the, the settings uh, on, our, on our DFM system to try and get down to that minimum level of irrigation where you don't see any stress in the vineyards and also not impacting on yield or quality. Here we are standing um, in front of the, uh, the major pack house on one of the farms uh, and right in front of me is a young orchard of sweet clove which is a uh, mid-season uh, seedless variety. For us really our main point of electricity consumption is guarding our irrigation pumps uh, because topography is, is quite mountainous. We, we typically have to pump our water uh, at, at great gradients uh, to get it onto the farm, into the dams and then out back into to the vineyards. What we have done over the last few years is we have installed uh, variable speed drive motors uh, on all of our major irrigation pumps as opposed to fixed speed motors and that really is something that we have seen tremendous savings over the last few seasons. The other aspect really is the more water we can conserve within our own dam, the less water we have to pump up from our main river here and that obviously saves on electricity costs as well. So typically at the end of uh, summer we try and uh, let our dams get as low as possible before winter rainfall and then hopefully coming out of winter like we've seen over the last winter getting up to, to a good level before we have to start pumping all the way from the river again. During the month of April and May we have quite a comprehensive uh, alien clearing uh, drive on the farm as well uh, to make sure that all our main streams and, and catchment areas are cleared of any alien deforestation. The other aspect uh, regarding electricity consumption has got to do with solar heating. For most of our farmhouses we have throughout the years installed uh, solar heating. And then the last point really, many many years ago there was a big uh, drive to uh, swap over from halogen lighting to uh, CFC lighting uh, and even nowadays LED lighting. So in close, I hope that today's video has been uh, helpful and informative. Just some of the uh, sustainability efforts that we have uh, at Jackie Cape Farms here in the town of Paul, uh, and being really involved in our soils, uh, trying to get as much of organic material into our soils as we possibly can, uh, which will help us consume water. And secondly, of course, uh, you know how we irrigate on the farm, the technology that we employ in order for us to do that, and then lastly, looking at at our electricity consumption back on the farm.